Okay, so the Thor Love and Thunder trailer ends with an electrifying shot of Jane Foster wielding Mjolnir. Looks like she's come a long way since we last saw her, and she's now bringing that hammer time that makes you feel like you can't lift this. You can't lift this. Natalie Portman coming on stage at Comic Con to lift Mjolnir was a big talking point when the movie was first announced, and if you're scratching your head over how this could happen, then here's the video for you. Throughout it, we're going to be breaking down the story of Mighty Thor from the comics, and also discussing how Mjolnir could be fixed. I'm giving you a spoiler warning right now, so if you don't want anything ruined, then bye bye Frost, and get the hell out of here. Please hit the thumbs up button because fate wills it so, and make sure you smash subscribe if you think we're worthy. But out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into our Jane Foster breakdown. Okay, so little is known about the MCU's version of the character in terms of where she comes from. However, if we look at the comics, we can start to piece together her backstory and how she potentially got to this point. In the source material, Jane's mother died of cancer when she was very young, and though her father was there for the majority of her childhood, he sadly passed away from a heart attack. After this, Jane put her full focus on science, and this led her on a fateful journey. First appearing in Thor, she quickly became a love interest for the character, and come the Dark World, she fused with the Aether, a powerful infinity stone with the capabilities of bending reality. Up until that point, she'd been a bit of a plain Jane, and after the Marvel movies became a pain, it didn't seem like we'd see her again. Thank you. Now, Natalie Portman had been burned in the past with big franchises, and when she didn't appear in Ragnarok, everyone just assumed she'd been burned out like Anakin. However, Marvel brought her back in Avengers Endgame using deleted scenes, and when Natalie appeared at the premiere, it seemed like something was afoot. Now, in the comics, we saw a similar arc to what we've had in the MCU so far. Thor left Earth, much like how he did in Ragnarok, Whereas there he was fighting Seda, in the comics he was fighting Gore. In the film he'd be played by Christian Bale, whose design is causing a bit of controversy because of how much it strays from the comics. Smooth, white, slight impressions around the eye, very nice. Let's see Paul Allen's gore. Don't know, don't know what came over me there. Now this is all important to bear in mind, as Thor has to be off world in order to tie into what happens in the comics. Much like her mother, Jane was diagnosed with breast cancer, and this could have potentially happened during the events of Ragnarok. In the five years between the snap and the blip, this may have developed further, and according to PubMed, untreated breast cancer can take about two to three years to kill someone, so if she was receiving treatment during this time, it may have given her a couple of extra years in between to bring us up to current day. I know breast cancer is a very serious thing as well, and I've had relatives die of it, so I don't want to be making light of the disease just to talk about comic book stuff, but with there being a five-year time gap, I thought I'd touch upon how they may handle it in this story, and I don't mean to offend anyone. Now it has to be said that Jane was pretty much a death store in the comics, and though she was offered magical treatment on Asgard, she decided to decline it. However, she did take chemotherapy, but issues rose from this when she gained Thor's powers, which we'll talk about in just a bit. When fighting against Nick Fury, Thor ended up losing his ability to wield Mjolnir, and he became known as the Unworthy Thor. Because no one else could lift it, it remained in place on the moon, and due to its sentience, it started to think for itself about who could be next. Now this could somewhat tie in with where the hammer was last left in the MCU. In the trailer, we can see that it's clearly been pieced back together as the rock cracks all over it, and therefore it seems like it's the one hella smashed and not the one from Endgame, which Cap of course returned. Due to Mjolnir being something that you have to be worthy to lift, I think the pieces of it might have remained outside Tonesburg at the site where Odin died and Hela emerged. The hammer might have called out to Jane and then using hashtag science, she could have pieced it back together. Potentially, she might have had help from Eitri the Dwarf, who forged Stormbreaker in Avengers Infinity War, and it's going to be interesting to see how they explain it. Now, as we saw with Cap in Endgame, if you're wielding it, then you have the power of Thor. When Jane picked it up, she gained all of his abilities, including super strength, the power to summon lightning, and Natalie Port. Man, you've got some big arms now. Now, I can pretty much see this being what happens in the movie, and much like she arrives on the scene during a battle in the trailer, Something similar happened in the comics. She got caught up in a big fight with Malaketh, who wanted to resurrect Luffy, but here it seems like they're just jumping in with Gore. In the background of the scene, you can see what appears to be the Black Berserkers of Gore, but hey, fan theories below. Now, in Becoming Thor, Jane ran into a lot of issues with her chemotherapy. Upon gaining the power of the God of Thunder, everything from her body was purified and put into a state of solidarity. Because the hammer removed everything toxic from her, it also removed the chemotherapy drugs as well. However, as the cancer was part of her before she lifted Mjolnir, it was seen as being something within her that had to be protected, 
and thus it developed further and got worse and worse. Still, she powered on and took part in arcs such as Secret Wars, Secret Empire, all new, all different Avengers and a lot more. There are some really great titles in there and she became a fan favourite because of them. However, as the cancer progressed, she got weaker and weaker and eventually her mates convinced her to put the hammer down. You want me to put the hammer down? However, when Asgardia started flying towards the sun in a genocidal attack by Mangog, Natalie Portman got the hammer one last time in order to put a stop to him. The beast put up one hell of a fight and it was only when she tied it to Molnir and threw it into the sun that she was able to finally vanquish the beast. However, this pretty much destroyed the hammer too and along with it came Thor's abilities. She ended up transforming back into her normal body and this is when the cancer took its toll and finally killed her. But it wasn't over yet. Now after meeting her and seeing that she was worthy, Thor decided to allow her to take up the mantle and he became known as Odinson. Just putting that in there as a disclaimer so it doesn't get confusing when I keep saying Thor all the time. He was crushed by her death but he refused to accept it and after channeling the god Tempest, he called Jane's soul back to the land of the living. In the afterlife she'd stood at the gates of Valhalla, however she refused to go in and instead returned back to Midgard. She told Odinson to try all that he could to become worthy once more and decided to focus on her cancer treatment having been given the second chance at life. Jane would beat the cancer and she would once more end up taking up arms with the Asgardians which led to her becoming a Valkyrie. With this comes the power of flight, enhanced sight and also the ability to sense when death is close by. I think that the movie might end up with her doing this whilst Molnia is given back to Thor and it means that we can kind of get the best of both worlds where Chris Hemsworth still remains in the role but we also get Jane Foster's Thor in the film. Lots of things to look forward to in the movie and though we're getting the usual get woke go bro commentary around the character, in the comics she goes on such a great arc that I think it'll be brilliant if they manage to adapt it properly for the MCU. We're kind of living in a time as well where Marvel are making different versions of characters and we've of course had all the Lokis, three different Spider-Men and Multiverse of Madness is going to have several versions of Doctor Strange. Feels like the next step for Marvel is to bring in alternate versions of established names and you actually don't get much bigger than Jane Foster. Natalie Portman has also been there since phase one so I think it's going to be a great arc to take her on that builds on a character that got brushed to the side after Thor the Dark World. I can't wait to see what Taika does with her and in the meantime I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you want to see from Jane in the film. Comment below and let me know and just to let you know we're running a competition right now and giving away three copies of Spider-Man No Way Home on the 15th of May. All you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the trailer. We pick the comments at random and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out all our theories after the trailer which will be linked on screen right here right now. If not then thanks for sticking through the video, I've been Paul, let's see you in the next one. Take care, peace.